Hello and welcome to the Nautilus Exploration Program's Module Supplement Videos. I'm Katherine Sutton, Ocean Exploration Trust STEM Education Specialist. And I'm Kelly Moran, OET's Production Coordinator. We're here to help facilitate the use of the STEM learning modules in your educational space. We want to make it simple for you to use these resources and we'll take you through module setup, offer instructional strategies, and provide ideas for extensions and interdisciplinary connections. STEM learning modules are available to educators as part of Ocean Exploration Trust's Community STEM program. You can learn more about this program at nautiluslive.org or reach our team with questions at education at oet.org. This video focuses on STEM learning module seafloor mapping. This module introduces students to the science of multi-beam sonar mapping. Students will simulate sonar beams to produce a survey of the seafloor and use their data to produce a bathymetric map. For background on the technology and exploration uses of multi-beam mapping, check out these resources from Nautilus Live. Links for students are included in the Don't Miss Playlist section of the module. Prior to the start of this lesson, you need to build several C4 boxes. We'll build one now with you. The materials you will need are empty boxes with lids, copy paper boxes or shoe boxes work well, wooden dowels, we recommend using 3 eighths of an inch dowel, a power drill, ruler, a sharpie, an extra foam core or cardboard equal in size to the box top. Inside the boxes, you can use any combination of materials to build a contoured seafloor. I'm going to make the seafloor from plastic cups and foam pieces, then use a hot glue gun to secure the seafloor in place. Student materials include colored pencils and calculators. Students will use a wooden dowel to simulate sonar pings traveling through the water column and bouncing off different seafloor terrain. Arrange elements in the boxes to simulate real seafloor features or simple shapes and secure your seafloor to the box. If you would like to model boxes after real seafloor features, such as seamounts, trenches, shipwrecks, or vent fields, check out these additional resources. You may want to think about having students construct their own boxes and then trade with peers or partner classrooms. Choose your level of creativity with this. Moving on, let's build box lids. Each box will have two lids, high resolution and low resolution. There are printable templates for both lids in the educator version of the module. Tape or glue the high resolution template to cardboard or foam core the same dimensions as the box top. Take care to align the templates in the same position on both the box top and the foam core. Drill holes at every intersection where grid lines meet. Make sure you have a drill bit slightly larger than the wooden dowel. Attach the low resolution grid to the original box lid, glue or tape it to the lid, and again drill holes, but now only through every other intersection. Cut the wooden dowels, used as the sonar pings to measure time, to a length just taller than seafloor boxes. Measure and mark every half inch on the dowel with a sharpie. Label the marks as half decimal points, starting nearest to the handle with 0.5, 1.0, 1.5, and so forth. Labels represent time elapsed in seconds for a sonar ping to travel ship to seafloor to ship. Tape the high resolution lid over the opening of the box to be sure students don't get a sneak peek of the seafloor halfway through the activity. Then place the low resolution lid on top. Holes in the two boxes will overlap. Send a dowel through each hole to clear the path. Congratulations, with boxes, lids, and dowels prepped, you're ready for this module. We recommend students work in small groups for this activity to promote collaboration skills. In trial one, students use a dowel to measure the seafloor through the low resolution lid, recording data on student worksheet one. Students will use these measurements and the provided equation, speed equals distance divided by time, to calculate the ship to seafloor to ship distance from their time data. Remind students that they will need to divide their distance in half to obtain the actual one-way depth of the sonar ping. Record depth on table two, depth data table. After completing data tables one and two, students will lift the low resolution lid to reveal the high resolution lid and follow the same procedure to complete the high resolution data tables, using the same distance equation to calculate the depth for data table four. Once the depth data table is completed, we can use the bathymetry color key to color in our student sheet 
and make our own rudimentary bathymetric map. Depth contour lines can be drawn in connecting points of equal depth to get an idea of the underwater terrain. Here is an example of what a map looks like with contour lines. A technology extension for this lesson lets students use computer data programs like Microsoft Excel to produce bathymetric maps. Instructions for this extension are provided in the educator version. Students will complete this lesson responding to the prompts under the analysis section. We hope you enjoyed learning about seafloor mapping with us today and feel confident using this module in your educational setting. For updates from the Nautilus Exploration Program, tune in to nautiluslive.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We look forward to seeing you for the next module supplement update.